Okay. Twitch had a little hiccup there. I think we're back on track now. That was, uh, something else. Anyway. And now we will present a formal commendation on behalf of the Imperial Government. Both representatives, please come forth. Right. Yes. Is Cedric actually being a good boy? I think he's just playing it up for the camera. Can we have the prince and instructor Reen shake hands as well? His Majesty took command of the forces from the main campus. And Instructor Schwarzer volunteered to handle the crisis as well. The citizens would be overjoyed of shot with you and the Prince. It's as they say. What do you say, Instructor Reen? Understood. I am not worthy of this honor. Hi, Osborne. Hi, Lecter. Even if there are differences between you, you're all one Thors. I believe that it's thanks to the goddess that you were called upon to become the principal of the branch school. <laughs> it's an honor to hear that, sir. Thank you for all of your hard work, Major Irving. You were placed in a difficult position, but the exercises have certainly paid off. It's my pleasure. And Randy... I can't thank you enough for all you do. <laughs> They're paying me. You don't have to worry about it. <laughs> I'm certain you've all been told already, but... The Imperial family will be hosting a party tonight to the Valflame Palace, and all of you have been invited. Until then, your special training's on hold. You're able to act freely today. Stretch your wings together and enjoy the Solstice Festival. Oh yeah? Alright! Where should we go, guys? Please, act in moderation. And if you receive any urgent summons, be sure to come back at once. Oh hey, Tio's here too. I didn't see her with the rest. I regret not being able to thank you publicly for what you've actually accomplished. In addition to stopping the agents, you protected the city from an unprecedented disaster. I can't thank you enough. Class 7 has truly become my greatest pride and achievement. Your Majesty. We're honored to hear you say that. <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing, though. Well, we're catching up, aren't we? By the way, what's going to happen to the Republic agents? Well, some of them are very weak, 
so they're being monitored closely. The guild's involved, though, so you don't have to worry about any inhumane treatment. After political negotiations, it's likely that we'll require compulsory reparations. Well, despite all this, the worst possible outcome was avoided. Yes, though we must continue to be cautious. But I think it's fine to relax, at least for today. Please, enjoy the peace you've bought by protecting our city. Such kind words aren't necessary. Hmm, I'm looking forward to it. Hmm. Oh. Brother. Toa. I know what they're feeling. We are well into our investigation of what happened to Angelica and George. And I promise to learn the truth behind the disappearance of the Azure Knight. But please, wait a bit longer, okay? Right. We're counting on you. Heh. <laughs> well, we'll be heading back now. That's true. I don't like places with tons of people anyway. Tita, Agate, have you got a nice date planned for today? Uh, Olivier? Oh, how wonderful. Oh, such youthful passion. <whistles> Shut up! Don't make me bring up the ones you have feelings for, you ass. Oh, you mean that woman? And we're back. Sorry about that. More hiccups from Twitch, or the internet, or whatever. Something's wrong. I don't know. Hopefully it's fine. In any case, uh, right now, Reen's just talking about his plans for the events. And, uh, he says, No, I'll be going as the leader of the students. I believe the students from the new Class 7, and from the main school, will be attending together. I see. Well, I'll be waiting for you there. Oh? Reen! Oh, Elise. I'm sorry to bug you two. No, not at all. What's up, Elliot? Well, actually, my dad wanted to have a word with you. General Craig did? Oh. Understood. Where is he now? He's having lunch in the VIP room right now. Are you able to head there now? So he's up there. Yeah, that's fine. Are you gonna head to the festival now, Elliot? Yes, we have the party tonight, so I want to enjoy myself a little bit. I especially want to see the flea market that the girls' school is putting on. <laughs> We'd love to have you. See you later, brother. Yeah, make sure you have fun, you two. You too, Reen. Call me if you get a chance. <sighs> General Olaf Craig, commander of the 4th Armored Division. And Elliot's dad. He must want to talk to me about the Azure Knight. Or possibly... <laughs> it's not too far. I better head up there. Alrighty then. So I guess we're heading to the VIP area. Oh, let's talk to Alan here. Hey, Reen. Good work today. Alan, you're here too. Yep, thanks to the general, I got to see the award ceremony too. <laughs> Class 7's always putting on a show. 
Are you looking forward to relaxing at the festival? Yeah, I'm planning to. How about you, Alan? You plan to do the same? Yep, I promised to meet Bridget after my shift. We're planning to go around the Garnier District and Mater and Martyr Park together. Huh, sounds like a perfect course for a date. I'm glad you two are doing well. <laughs> it's all thanks to you guys, Reen. We didn't end up having to declare martial law. Yeah. So, is the general in this room? Yeah, I can notify him at any time. Are you ready to meet him now? Yes, please. Sir, Schwarzer is here to speak with you. Yeah, send him in. And ensure we aren't disturbed. Yes, understood. Please excuse me. Thank you for coming. Schwarzer, you did good work. General Craig, it's good to see you again. I wasn't aware you'd be here though, Instructor Nightheart. No, I merely stayed behind to say my thanks. I'll be leaving the Class 1 students to you at tonight's party. Let me apologize for our student's attitude again. You don't need to worry about it. A spirit of competition is natural and healthy, after all. And I think it contributed to us being able to solve this case. <laughs> Couldn't have said it better myself. I'm not a Thor's alum, but that's what I'd expect of the school that Oliver and Claire went to. And not to mention General Aurelia and Chancellor Osborne. <laughs> and my comrade Mueller went there too. If I didn't go to Thor's, I may not be who I am today. Yes, it truly is a once-in-a-lifetime thing. Including Elliot joining Thor's and ending up in your class. Yeah, that's very true. I have someone I have to meet, after all. Um, well, about that, I'm really counting on you. She's already at that age, but I'm sounding too much like a father. Please, don't worry. I'll be very moderate. See you soon, Schwarzer. Nightheart's got a hot date with his commanding officer's daughter. Ooh. <laughs> um, wait, is he with Elliot's sister? Well, they've been getting along well recently. I heard that they're planning on spending the festival together. Wow, that's great. I've been helped so much by Nightheart and Fiona. Well, nothing's decided yet. I don't want my Fiona to get married so soon. She's only 24. And again, Nightheart's my subordinate. I don't want to intrude, but... I do have to think about this. <laughs> I'm probably a I'm probably just as protective as of Elise now that I think about it. Alright, let's get to the point. Have a seat. Excuse me. There are two reasons why I called you here. First of all, regarding the Azure Knight that we've been keeping at Gorelia Fortress. 
It indeed was noted as missing this morning. It's as I thought. If that unit has that spatial translocation function, our search range must extend to anywhere. But I figured we might learn something if we looked at the surveillance cameras in the hangar. We're waiting for that for now. Understood. Thanks for keeping me in the loop. And there's another thing. This is the main issue. I have a message from you for Prin from Principal Van Dyke. Really? He is, after all, a former military general, and he was restored to the regular army after being the principal in Thor's. He was invited to tonight's party too, but he can't attend because he's too busy. In exchange, he asked me to convey a message to you. Is that right? If the Supreme Commander of the Army is too busy to come to the party... I think I know what you're thinking, but let's leave it at that for now. The General did go out of his way to offer his praise for Class 7. And he proposed that I discuss something with you. Regarding a person who was once the General's subordinate and is now my direct superior, the former General Gileath Osborne. Oh. I'm sure General Van Dyke knows about it already. Yes, he's been around Osborne ever since he joined the military, so of course he knows. I was always his subordinate, always chasing after his back. That's why I find myself with strange feelings after hearing from General Van Dyke. After all, I remember the story of a black-haired boy with whom my Elliot became classmates with. Yeah. Did you know this when I was five years old and I met you in Ymir? Yeah. That hair color matches the Chancellor perfectly, and your face looks just like his wife's. Boys really do take their looks from their mothers, don't they? Eventually, I heard the truth from his mouth directly. Based on your relationship with him now, the General has decided he has to intervene. If we miss this opportunity, we may not get another chance. I'm listening. Please, tell me what he said. Very well then, listen up. Regarding Gileath Osborne, the man the General and I know very well. Much is still unclear about the Hamill incident, the causes, and what happened thereafter. At that time, the army consisted of many commoners. General Osborne was said to be a leader figure of sorts. As a master of over a hundred sword techniques, he had superior practical and judgment abilities. Everyone expected much of his future in the army. Even a man like him didn't marry until much later in his life. When he was 35 years old, he had a fateful encounter with a certain lady. She was at least 10 years younger than him, which he seemed embarrassed about. General Van Dyke worked as a matchmaker of sorts, and they settled down into a nice home. Not long after, they had a son and named him Reen. Soon thereafter, he was promoted to Brigadier General. He continued his public service and his happy life. Until that one day, 14 years ago. Around that time, the noble generals, wanting to make a name for themselves, started becoming advocates of a war. Brigadier General Osborne saw what they were after, and he began formally protesting. He had thought the generals had come to accept what he was saying. But a few days later, tragedy struck. His home, which was in the suburbs of the capital, 
was attacked by a group of Jaegers. They set fire to the house late at night. He came back rushing home from a trip. The very next morning, all he found was the burned down house. The Jaegers had fled, and he had found a corpse. After searching everywhere, he was bleeding all over, but he could not find his five-year-old son. And after that, Hamill was attacked, and thus began the Hundred Days War. Three months into the war, with great force, the Empire had nearly occupied all of Liberal. But thanks to the Queen's counterattack, eventually the noble forces were repelled, and the result was a stalemate. In order to break through the deadlock, General Van Dyke was thrust into the mix. And after disappearing for a long time, Osborne abruptly returned to the scene. With General Van Dyke's authority, Brigadier General Osborne was entrusted with the full authority of the Hamill Incident. And ten days later, a ceasefire was agreed to with Liberal, bringing the 100 Days War to an end. And six months later, the very same Brigadier General was elected as the very first commoner to become Prime Minister. I see. So then... But... Why did... This was everything the General had told me. For three months, the truth is we don't know what he was doing. We don't know what motivates his actions. We don't know where he intends to lead the Empire. And perhaps... The only one who can find out is you. His own son. Oh. The only person I can call my father is Teo Schwarzer. I only have a few fragmented memories of Osborne. Yeah, of course. Back when he was in the military, I would occasionally hear from Teo. He was like a younger brother to Osborne, although he was a noble. He was good friends when he was entrusted with you. Yeah, I got the same feeling from my father's letters. But it's true that his blood flows through my veins. I don't know what happened after that disaster, but I do know that he protected me. Reen. Please, grow up healthy. Goddess, I beg you, please spare this child. But, I can't accept his actions. His way of trampling people who are in his way. His attitude that makes him appear like a hateful monster. And his military ambitions regarding the Republic. So, I think I'll confront him on that at least. But not as his son, but as a person who was saved by him 14 years ago. Because I believe the words he told me back then. There might be an opportunity tonight at the party to find the hidden truth, his suspicious allegiance with dubious powers. Where he intends to lead the Empire. If we have a chance to talk one-on-one, -on -one, I think I might be able to find that out myself. I see. I had always believed after meeting you, that we might one day live as a family. That didn't come to be. But you did end up in Elliot's class. We can thank the goddess for that. 
the General and I are counting on you. Please, learn the true intent of Chancellor Osborne, and tell him about yours and your friend's feelings.